Let's declare a pandemic amnesty. Let's just forget everything we said out of our emotional rage and did and treat people like crazy, or crazy nuts and create division and uh, advocate for dangerous policies. Let's just forget that amnesty. Welcome to the JP Reacts channel, my freedom-loving friend. Today I want to talk about a, an article that was posted in The Atlantic by an Atlantic writer named Emily Oster. In the title of this, it's catching a lot of attention, I think for good reason. And the, the article is entitled, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty. Hmm. Subtitle, we need to forgive one another for what we did and said when we were in the dark about <laughs> Now there's something I really agree with about this, and then there's something I think is dangerous about this that I certainly don't agree with. I'll share both with you in just a second. But first, like any good, loving, freedom-loving American, just to use the word loving too much, when I saw this article, I thought, let's declare a pandemic amnesty. I don't know exactly what amnesty means. Sounds like a cool word. I think I know what it means. So I, I, I want to know for sure. So I looked it up. So just make sure our freedom loving uh, brains are on the same page. Amnesty definition from Merriam Webster, and apparently they're changing definitions left and right to account for uh, Marxism that's trying to destroy objective truth in our country. But nonetheless, their definition of amnesty is the act of an authority, such as a government, by which pardon is granted to a large group of individuals. So I think basically what she's suggesting is we as a collective pardon and just forget the crazy lunatics that were going on about their hysteria and making demands like you get away from me, you, you put your mask and you're gonna kill me, you're gonna kill your grandma. What I think is good about this I have the attitude, I think it's better to forgive people, but never forget. If we forgive and let that help us also forget, that means we don't learn lessons from past mistakes. That means we don't hold people accountable that need to be held accountable. But also, I don't think it's a good idea to not forget, which we, we don't want to forget, but also not forgive. Not forgiving, I mean, then we're drinking poison thinking someone else is gonna die, and all that does is hurt us. Not forgiving also creates more division within our country, and God knows we don't need that. I, I'll just say right off the bat before we dive into some specifics of this article and some reactions to it, I see a second wave of people really waking up here in the past month. I think it started when the Pfizer executives, uh, executive was testifying in front of the European Union and she admitted, we never did testing to see if this thing stops transmission. There was so much evidence building up, but then that seemed to be the straw that broke a lot of people's camel's back of denial in their mind where now we have a second wave of people waking up realizing uh, there's a lot of deception that's been happening in the past few years. And then there were, you know, my guess is you and I, we were awake to that deception pretty early on, if not from the get-go of the whole pandemic. Now, I think it's important when we see people in the second wave waking up that we don't greet them with judgment, ridicule, anger, like, what the wrong with you like why were you such a moron buying into this horrible narrative built on deception and manipulation just trying to control people what an idiot you are i think that's what the tyrants want us to do i know that the, the tyrants know that people aren't as dumb as they hoped they are the tyrants know more and more people are waking up what strengthens the tyrants ability to uh do tyrannical things is division. So I think they want freedom lovers to greet newly awakened people with division, anger, ridicule, judgment, because that means the freedom loving community becomes divided and we, we keep ourselves from growing. So I personally think it when people are newly waking up, even if they did ridiculous ignorant stuff for the past few years, even if they contributed to the backtracking of human consciousness going towards control, not freedom, 
I think it's very important that we greet them with open, loving arms. Forgiveness, certainly for any level of harm that they cause, and that's not for us to judge. We greet them with uh, welcoming attitudes, and we greet them with compassion, where, where we understand, like, I know you were deceived, and yes, it's your fault. We're not gonna pretend, like, you have free will, you make your own choices, it's your fault, you were deceived. Yet, we can have compassion and realize you were probably deceived because you are a good person wanting to do good things. And I can see how the tyrants used weaponized morality, where they prey on good people with these virtues of, here's the good thing to do, and if you want to be a good person, you need to do these good things. I think we need to have compassion for that. And I think that creates unity, not division. And we know divided we fall, united we stand. And stand we must and stand we are as freedom lovers. I think that's very important context just to set here at the beginning as we dive into Emily Oster's, uh, let's declare pan a pandemic amnesty and just forget it. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, breeze through a couple of the highlights of it. She starts off talking about, hey, in April 2020, uh, me and my family were out uh, uh, taking a hike, and we had a family signal, which the person in front would use if someone was approaching on the trail and we needed to put on our masks. Uh, once, when another child got too close to my then four-year-old son on a bridge, her four-year-old son yelled at her, social distancing. I think that's just interesting. That, that's the, the parent's fault. I mean, no four-year-old's going to... Uh, sit there and be like, ah, oh, I've reviewed the science and I'm making my own conclusion that I need to yell social distancing at a person in order to keep me and my family safe from transmission of this virus. And, uh, no, that, that that's the parent's fault. No real point to that other than like, eh, it's the parent's fault. Then in the second par paragraph, she's talking about well, we were wearing cloth masks made out of old bandana, da bandanas, which wouldn't have done anything anyway, like any other mask. Would have. But the thing is, we didn't know. Now, I know in my freedom-loving spleen, I get like this emotional charge when she says we didn't know. And yes, she didn't know. But my emotional charge that's like tempts me to judge this person, which I probably am, uh, it tempts me to say like, but you could have known. There, there was plenty of information out there about the realities, about like a much cleaner version of the truth of what was really going on in the beginning of this thing. You claim you didn't know, yeah but you could have known. What you did was outsource your truth to the least trustworthy source of truth out there, the mainstream media. I think that's one of the lessons here. You know, do, do we need to forgive people? Yes, but I don't think we need yet to forgive the tyrants, the mainstream media that were creating deliberate deception. For someone to be in a place where they and we are ready for this act of forgiveness, they need to acknowledge what they've done. They need to admit to, well, in this case, uh, probably their crimes against humanity. One of the things I want to keep in mind when I'm looking at innocent people who maybe acted like lunatics, and I, I'm forgiving them, which by the way, like, who am I to judge them and need to forgive them in the first place? Kind of arrogant of me, but I'm probably arrogant. So as I forgive them and look at like, cool, let's never forget. There's two things we never for, wanna never forget. One is like the, the literal lessons, like what was it, the lie, what was the truth? Like, cool, bandanas didn't do anything. Cool, like, don't forget that. But the real thing to never forget here that we don't want to glass over with this, let's just call it amnesty and like, let's just forget everything. We don't want to forget the principal lesson here, which is don't outsource your truth. Do your own thinking. Don't discount other potential sources of truth just because you have an emotional charge and you, you, you're you having this coercion coming at you that compels you to look at them, like smear them, discount them. Well, that's just a crazy lunatic conspiracy theorist. That's the principal thing to never forget here. Never outsource your truth. If we can remember that, history doesn't have to repeat itself. But if we forget that lesson, oh, and now I'm outsourcing my truth because it's 
more convenient. It takes less energy for me to not do my own thinking. Uh, I'll fall for the emotional persuasion of giving my power away, my perspective, my truth to these outsourced outlets. If we forget that, history certainly will repeat itself. But the article goes on and she's talking about Hey, you know, we uh, thought the Johnson and Johnson shot was as good as the other shots. So it's like, yeah, that's something we got wrong. We need to grant amnesty to that. She goes on to talk about how there were disagreements about how long schools should have been closed for. She advocated for schools opening sooner, which is totally awesome. But when I look at the the shallowness in which she's suggesting we grant amnesty to she's talking about just at the level of what were the literal decisions people were making based on she's using misinformation versus truth and now we're realizing like oh the misinformation was way more truthful than the truth was so my conclusion is i completely dis uh, i completely disagree with her perspective of we should grant amnesty about the pandemic, because what she's talking about granting amnesty to is just forgiving and forgetting those literal errors people have, those shallow literal errors on the different decisions people were making on a day-to-day -day -day basis. If we do that, we forget to go deeper. So I, I disagree with what she's intending to grant amnesty to. And what I will add once again is underneath those literal decisions, is this huge base layer of the foundation, which those literal decisions were sitting on, that we must never forget. Some people gave away their power and bought into deception as though it was truth because they were emotionally persuaded to do so. We must never forget that. And if we just forgive the base layer on top of that, then we forget, oh, there's a whole foundation of empowerment underneath. And uh, <laughs> this lady, the author of this article, she's catching so much flack on social media, which I, I love because we know history that's forgotten about will absolutely repeat itself. And people who need to be held accountable in my opinion, principally the tyrants for their deception, as well as individuals need to be held accountable. We need all look at ourselves and each other and say like, if you were making dumb decisions that hurt your children, that uh, impaired their psychological development, you hurt yourself and your family by staying disconnected from them, we need to acknowledge like that's your fault you need to be held accountable for your free will outsourcing your truth which then compelled your actions to potentially hurt yourself and other people and your children people have to be held accountable for that we have to acknowledge the consequences of our choices even when our first choices outsource my truth because if we don't do that if we don't take the self-responsibility for ourselves, our actions, our choices to dis, uh, disregard our own truth and outsource our truth, then we never learn. That is so important in my opinion. And just taking a look <laughs> at Tim Kennedy's response on Twitter, they arrested people for paddleboarding or walking on the beach. They arrested moms for taking their kids to a playground. They censored facts and science that did not align with their narrative. They fired police officers, firefighters, and soldiers for not complying. Then he concludes, go vote. Which I think is a, a really empowering way of looking at that. So with the headline of her article, I agree with those words. Let's declare a pandemic amnesty if we're talking about forgiveness and talking about acknowledging, never forgetting and taking self-responsibility for the foundational base layer of giving our power away and outsourcing our truth. My spin, if, if I said those words, that's what I would mean. And I would agree with the words, let's declare a pandemic amnesty if they're based on what I just said. That's not where she's coming from. So in my opinion, uh, Emily Oster is full of crap. 
<laughs> doing a disservice saying, like, yeah, let's just forget everything that happened and therefore no self-responsibility. Nobody's held accountable for their choices. Tyrants, you know, like the people in the authorities, you know, like let's not hold them accountable. No, nothing changes. There has to be consequences for our choices and our actions. And I, I, one of the reasons why I love Tim Kennedy's post, how he concludes, go vote. There's a bit of responsibility we all have in this, isn't there? The people that were making at the governmental level decisions that were probably to deceive us some of the time, that's our fault. We voted them in. And someone could say, well, maybe we didn't vote them all in, but they got in, didn't they? Yeah, and, and that's also partly our fault. We've empowered a system that has allowed that to happen. Now, I know there's so many of us in the freedom fighting community that are taking actions on a daily basis to reclaim the system that we've let go to tyrannical control freaks. And that's great. And I think if you're working hard to make this system a better system, keep tyrants out, call them out when they get in, voting differently, you probably at the core of your being, even if you haven't consciously thought about it, have a sense of, yeah, what's happened is my fault. I'll take that self-responsibility, which empowers me to have the self-responsibility to change what I allowed to have happen. So I think self-responsibility is a superpower for freedom lovers. I think Emily Oster's article, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty, where she's coming from, it's actually attempting to dissuade people from claiming self-responsibility. Because it hurts, doesn't it? When we look at cool stuff that's happening and we have self-responsibility for that, it feels great. But when we look at awful stuff that's happening and we claim responsi self-responsibility for that, it hurts. And I think she's trying to talk people out of self-responsibility, which ultimately I think is a very disempowering thing. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section about this article, Let's Declare a Pandemic Amnesty. Let me know what your thoughts are about the article and what you would add to it to make it more empowering. This has been an episode of JP Reacts. I really appreciate you watching my stuff. It, it means a lot to me. You help put food on the table for me and my family. That's something I so appreciate. You do a tremendous, you being a, a viewer of mine, whether you watch one video or share it or watch all my videos, you're a tremendous support for me. But more importantly, I think you're a tremendous support for something far greater than me, far greater than all of us put together. You're a tremendous support for the freedom loving movement, which what motivates me so much, why the freedom loving movement is so important to me, is one, I think it honors God. I think God's way is freedom. We're born in freedom, we'll return to freedom in the kingdom of heaven or wherever we go when we're done here. And also with that, the freedom loving movement is so important to me because I look at it as a movement that is gifting my son and then his children and then his grandchildren with a better life, a life where they get to swim in their birthright of freedom. That's something that just motivates me to no end and that's something that you are supporting by caring about and taking action in the freedom loving movement. So with that said, that's commentary on Emily Oster's article, Let's Declare uh, Pandemic Amnesty. Yeah. Uh, let's forgive, but never forget.